Okay, so let's take a look at how we can take a six by six by six inch box and create two cardboard atatama situations. So the first thing I do in this box here is I just fold these flaps like so, so I can kind of get a, a straight edge here. I'm just gonna take my box cutter and my ruler and I'm just gonna go right along the edge here and cut them. And then once you have these, we'll use these scrap parts for the triangle pieces I'll show you here in a second. So don't throw these away. Then we'll do the same thing on this side here. Fold those flaps, get our ruler, make our cut. Now, when it comes to the box itself, I know that it's six inches and I have my measurements on my mat here. So I'm just gonna go three inches in and I'm gonna make a cut right down the line. This is what's gonna give us our two cardboard autonomous frames. So I'm just gonna cut this box right on down here. And from there, We've now got our two frames for a cardboard autonomy. So now let's go ahead and get these strengthened and actually make these where they hold up on their own. Okay, so I usually do two inches, but I have found that going a half inch actually is more effective with your cardboard. So if I go an inch and a half on the corners, I can turn around and get another inch and a half. So this allows you to get four triangles per each piece of scrap, which is way more effective at using your cardboard effectively. All right, so now let's go ahead and glue. You can see this here is not very strong and flimsy, and it doesn't stand up very well. So we're gonna take these cardboard triangles. I'm gonna use the two inch ones, that's just my, my preference. We're gonna take some hot glue, and we're gonna put it on two edges here. Be careful not to burn yourself. Hot glue is hot. If you haven't burned yourself with hot glue, you will, and you'll realize, yep, yeah, it really is hot. That's why they call it hot glue. And we're just going to take our time. We're just going to stick it in one corner, and you just have to hold it. So a couple things here why this is waiting for this to dry. For your students, you need to think about, do you want to have this already prepared ahead of time? It's a lot of work on your end. Um, or is this something that you want to teach them? Teach them how to measure, how to do cuts. You could talk about right angles. You could talk about squares and triangles and geometric patterns and shape and how they float together. And while they're doing this, they can be thinking about how to use tools when we get to the cardboard autonomous stage in which actually bring the story to life. And I have found that sometimes going through this process myself has given me some of my best ideas going forward. And so just something to think about while you go through this journey, um, whether you think it's important for your kids to do this or not. I personally do, because there are tons of learning moments, questions, inquiry, helping kids that literally design everything from scratch. Because I think so many times we, we just give them prepackaged goods. And I know that time is a constraint, and tools are always scary, and you know there's all sorts of things that we gotta think about. But I definitely think slowing down and forcing them to make everything their their own 100% even this part builds a sense of ownership and agency that just makes them even more proud of their work if you didn't want to use box cutters you could use like the make do saws there are other safer tools out there and maybe you cut the frame ahead of time and they have to figure out the best triangle um, to put in the corner. I mean, that's hard. Kids will do like regular triangles and different sides of triangles and you get just lots of great learning opportunities. So don't be afraid. There's something really powerful about building all this. And I know in the workshops that I do, I will have the educators actually build all this. And at first they kind of scoff, but there's a real sense of value that comes with it. So while we're gonna wait for this to dry, the next thing you're gonna wanna think about getting around is a screw and a pencil and 
some wood skewers. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry. You go find these three items. Okay, so once this is dried, we're gonna take our screw that we talked about earlier and we're just gonna poke a hole in the top. And then we're gonna do it also on the two sides. So what I like to do is get one on the side and then I take a skewer and I go straight across, just try to get it as straight as I can and just poke a little hole. And then I know exactly where I need it to go on the other side. And so once I have that, then I can just check to make sure that it works. This is gonna go all the way across here, perfect. And then we're gonna have another one that's gonna go from the top down. Now the problem is this gets a little flimsy and wobbly. So actually what we wanna do here then is take our pencil and we're gonna make this a little bit wider. And just take your time so you don't bend your cardboard and we get a hole like that. And then we're gonna take a paper straw and we use paper instead of the plastic because plastic will melt with the hot glue. And we're gonna stick that in just like so here. And so what I'm gonna do is I don't like it too far down because I don't know where my my cam's going to be yet. So I'm just going to glue this around the edge and kind of hold this in place. And this is going to give us a nice support for our cardboard automata. And I'm going to let that dry. And what this does then, it allows this piece here to be more stable. It's not going to be so flimsy all over. And I can always trim this up as needed once I get it dry and, and, and in place here. It won't be so bad. And so now, once we have that, it's now time to create our cardboard autonomous.